I've constructed a scale model of the solar system in my backyard. This model is to scale both in terms of planet size and distance from the sun. Here's the sun. This sun measures 5.9 inches in diameter. I've got the planets lined up in a straight line, and they do actually align this way every 396 billion years or so. The scaling factor is one foot equals 1,750,000 miles. Here's Mercury, the smallest of the eight planets. Measures only a half millimeter in my scale model. Mercury is about 70% metal, and it looks gray and cratered like the Earth's moon. Here's a picture of Mercury traversing the sun as seen from Earth. As a reminder of just how big the sun is, if you were to travel a distance equal to the diameter of the sun in a jet airplane, it would take two months of continuous flying. Hopefully your fellow travelers will remain pleasant and well-mannered for the entire flight. Venus is about the same size as Earth. It's that bright white planet, sometimes visible in the night sky, that looks like a close star. It has a thick carbon dioxide atmosphere with a barometric pressure of 92 bars, or 1,350 PSI. The temperature is 867 degrees Fahrenheit, actually a bit hotter than Mercury. As we move farther from the sun, the next terrestrial body is planet Earth. Now standing here by the Earth, when I look at the sun in my model, it should look to be exactly the same size as standing here and looking up at the sky to the real sun. Putting them side by side, you can see they are the same size. Now if you are traveling away from Earth in a spaceship at 25,000 miles per hour, you'd be going about this fast. Just kidding, that's the speed of light. Nope, your spaceship would get about this far in 24 hours. It's good that we can move much faster than that as we make our way out toward Mars at a scale speed of 27 times the speed of light. Mars is about half the diameter of Earth with a force of gravity of about four-tenths of Earth. So if you can bench press 300 pounds on Earth, you'd be able to bench press 791 pounds on Mars with the same effort. Mars gets its reddish color from iron oxide dust, just like the soil in many parts of the American West. Something interesting about these inner planets, they're all fairly close to the sun, and they're all composed of things we're familiar with, and that we would associate with planets like rock and metal, and silica. Now let's travel out to Jupiter. Jupiter is much farther out compared to the four inner planets, which are all 30 to 50 million miles apart. Jupiter is about 342 million miles from Mars. Jupiter is a gas planet composed of various forms of hydrogen and helium, and is by far the largest planet in the solar system at 11 times Earth's diameter. Jupiter has at least 95 moons. Because Jupiter is nearly a half billion miles from the sun, it takes light from the sun 43 minutes to make it out this far. In my scale model, Jupiter is 15 millimeters, about the size of a marble. Moving on to Saturn. Saturn is about twice as far from the Sun as Jupiter. The Cassini-Huygens probe was launched in late 1997 and arrived at Saturn on July 1, 2004. It spent the next 13 years orbiting Saturn, all the while taking measurements, gathering data, and capturing photographs. Saturn has at least 146 moons. It's another gas giant made up of hydrogen and helium. The gases are in gas form on the outside, and then liquid, and finally a metallic form of the gas deep inside the planet. But the specifics are not known. Saturn's magnetic field is 580 times stronger than Earth's. The rings are made of water ice crystals, and are actually quite thin at only 66 feet on average. When I black out the surroundings, you can see how small the sun would look when viewed from Saturn compared to Earth. Uranus and Neptune are so far from the sun 
They had to be placed out in this cornfield. Let's walk out to Uranus. I did not use any time lapse in this video. That way, you'll have a better sense of the relative distances between the planets as I walk from one to the next. As you might remember, back at the inner planets, it was just a few steps from the Sun to Mercury, Mercury to Venus, Venus to Earth, and Earth to Mars. But these outer planets are much farther apart. The distance from Saturn to Uranus and my scale model is 174 yards, or almost two football fields. The actual distance from Saturn to Uranus is almost 10 times the distance from the Sun to the Earth. The Voyager 2 spacecraft was constructed in the early 1970s to gather data on Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. This time period was chosen to take advantage of the close orbital alignment of the outer planets due to take place in the late 1970s. Voyager 2 was launched August 20, 1977. Its closest pass to Jupiter occurred on July 9, 1979. Just over four years later, August 26, 1981, it passed by Saturn. On January 24, 1986, Voyager 2 arrived at Uranus. Uranus is more than twice as far from the Sun as Saturn. It's so far away, it takes light from the Sun two hours and 41 minutes to get here. The temperature of the upper atmosphere of Uranus is a chilly minus 364 degrees Fahrenheit. It's made up mostly of water ice, ammonia ice, and methane ice, and has a diameter of 31,000 miles, or almost four times the diameter of Earth. Uranus has 27 known moons. In my scale model, Uranus is about the size of a pea. The sun in my scale model is difficult to see at this distance. But from Uranus, the real sun would look like a close star, because that's what it is. Okay, now it's on to Neptune. From Uranus to Neptune is another long walk. It's 190 yards in my solar system model, roughly two football fields. The real distance in our solar system is 1 billion miles, or 1.6 billion kilometers. Pictures and textbooks cannot accurately show the planets to scale and their distances from the sun on the same drawing. The planets are always shown big and close together and all on one page. This illustration does a good job of showing the relative size of the sun and planets, but leaves you with the impression that they are all very close together. But the planets are actually so far apart that if you compress the distances down so that they would fit on a book page or a computer screen, the planets would be so small that they would be impossible to see. Here's a bird's eye view of all the planets showing their relative distances from the sun. I used 25,000 miles per hour as the speed of a spacecraft. That was the approximate speed of the fastest Apollo spacecraft, Apollo 10. Neptune is the farthest planet from the sun at 2.8 billion miles. It is almost exactly the same size as its distant neighbor Uranus. Its composition is also very similar, making it light blue in color. Light from the sun takes four hours and 10 minutes to reach Neptune. If you were to travel in a spaceship at 25,000 miles per hour, it would take you 12 and a half years to get here from Earth. If your spaceship only traveled as fast as a jet airplane, the trip would take you 550 years. Hopefully your stewardess has lots of pretzels in a well-stocked beverage cart. Since the two ice giants are so close in size, I've made Neptune the same size as Uranus in my model. Okay, I'm out here at Neptune now, at the edge of the solar system. Now if I was to include the, the nearest star to our solar system, I would have to place it about 2,700 miles in that direction up in Circle, Alaska.
Considering the extreme distance to the nearest star and even the vast distances between our own planets puts into perspective the impossibility of interstellar travel using current technology. And considering the harsh, inhospitable environments presented by the other seven planets of our own solar system can help us to appreciate the beauty and perfection of our home planet.